given us so many amazing processes and tools to better ourselves and to flow with our inner being. Which is the same statement, to be who we really are. Inner being aligned. Yes, absolutely. Because this bettering of yourself isn't something that stays forever. It either is or it isn't in the moment, depending upon what your thoughts are. But what you're talking about is developing better and better of habits to hold yourself more consistently in that power. That's what you're talking about. It's like practicing the muscle. Yes. So why don't I want to work out? <laughs> and what I mean, <laughs> and what I mean by that is, I have so much resistance to use these tools and these processes, even though I have seen the wonderful things that it has brought to my life when I am consistent and I don't have that discipline. Let us make this simpler for you because you're not alone in that because it's a lot to digest and what we're really asking you to do is to take everything that you've lived and now just do it a little differently. And that's a lot to ask of anybody because you've got patterns and habits and you've also got law of attraction compounding those patterns and habits. So give yourself a break. But there is something that you could consider because we have found an easier way of talking about it. We talked about it already, which is rather than working so hard to move up the emotional scale, just find yourself in satisfaction and identify it and isolate it and know what the feeling feels like and then let that be your sort of standard of what you're reaching for. When you catch things in those early stages, then law of attraction does all the work. If you feel a little satisfaction, and just because you do, we'll demonstrate this with you here in a minute, then the law of attraction is responding to this resistance-free vibration. And when the law of attraction is responding to a resistance-free vibration, it gains momentum quickly, and then you feel the inspiration to move in the direction of it. Now, we're going to give you a statement that as you hear it and sort of let it settle in, this is the basis of where your new belief and understanding is going to come from. We're going to speak it clearly and probably loudly if we know Esther when she gets hold of one of these impulses from us. And we're going to repeat it until you all really hear it and understand it. Satisfaction, which is what your inner being feels all the time about you, where you're going, who you are. Satisfaction on steroids. Satisfaction comes from one place and one place only. And that is moving in the direction of who you really are. Moving in the direction of your desire. That's the only place it comes from. So what happens is you live in a world that has tried to motivate you to behavior about things that you don't feel satisfied about. Your parents want you to do what they want you to do, not what would satisfy you. Your employers want you to do what they need you to do, not necessarily what would be satisfying to you in the moment. And so you're having a rebellion inside of yourself because most of you are sort of tired of pushing against your own flow. Does that make sense to you? Think about the difference in the way you feel on a morning that you're waking up to go on vacation or to go fishing or to go do something really fun and the way you feel when you're waking up to go to work. And it's because the vacation is calling you. And when you point in the direction of that, there's no resistance. And so you're so clever. You're so fun. You're really on point. You remember what you need to bring. You think of clever things. You're working with others. The universe cooperates with you. But it sometimes doesn't feel that way when you're doing something that you really don't want to do. So here's our message to you. Never do anything you don't want to do. Because first of all, you're setting a bad example for the rest of the world. You're teaching people that they can control you by whining and complaining and demanding things of you. Demonstrate to yourself that you are someone who wants to be inspired, not motivated. So you got to stop trying to motivate yourself. You don't like it when people try to boss you around. When somebody tells you that you need to do something, you don't want to do it. People who know you know that you're stubborn that way. And so this is the same thing. you got to understand that about yourself. You can't demand of yourself. You can't motivate yourself. You've got to let yourself be inspired, which means you've got to understand these important things. You've got to understand that it's not just you with you that you 
you have an inner being you that is really this powerful, dominant, strongest part of you. And that that inner being knows everything that you've asked for and is focused upon everything that you've asked for in a way that those cooperative components are already being gathered to that. You got to understand that there is a vibrational reality. We want so much for you to accept the realness of this that we named it the vortex, wrote two books about it. We want you to understand that this vibrational reality, which is the furthest expansion that you have accomplished vibrationally along with your inner being, it's vivid and it's real. It's not imaginary, although we want you to seek the image of it. It is a real vibration, and it is calling you. And when you move in the direction of it, because you're not doing the opposite, because you're not doing that thing that holds you away from it, maybe because you meditated and so your mind is clear, maybe because you've been making a list of positive aspects so you're in tune with it, maybe because you're just in love with life right now. doesn't matter what the reason is. But when you have no resistance... You will receive that inspiration that will call you forward. And you'll never again say, how can I make myself do something? As you listen to us, oh, we've got so many great ideas. We're so sure of ourselves. Esther stands here and expresses the clarity of what we have to say. And to most of you or to most anyone who's looking at this for the first time, this just looks like somebody who really believes what they say and has some pretty good ideas and it's just another opinion that might work might not work we get how there are so many voices in the world that are encouraging you in different ways to do different things but this we know for sure if you will accept that you are an extension of source energy and you will accept that your source energy is aware of you and is calling you and you will decide that you're going to meditate to allow yourself access to that and so you do it. Maybe it takes a week or two or three before you really feel that you've allowed yourself that connection. And then an impulse occurs to you, an impulse. And by that, we mean something that just feels good. For Esther, it's like, oh, I think I'll move the furniture around. And then she meets all kinds of people that day that were really meaningful to her. Or, oh, I think I'll stop over there and get gas. And then she meets something really significant. These are not blockbuster ideas usually. It's an idea about something that just feels good to you. But if it feels like a good idea, follow it. And then as it unfolds into something, as these thoughts are turning to things, you will have firsthand understanding about what alignment with source translates into your life and you will trust your guidance. And then you will begin to say, I'm going to prime the pump by making sure that I'm satisfied as much as I can. And then I'm going to let the law of attraction and my vortex call it. And here's why. Step one is you're in contrast and life tells you what you don't want and what you do want. So you've launched all these rockets and you've got this magnificent request. Source energy is all over all of that. In other words, your inner being is answering everything that you've asked for. Your inner being is all over it. When you ask, it is given. We're not kidding. Someone should write a book about that. <laughs> so it's done. Step three is you meditate and get into the receiving mode. And step four is you've just done that so well that you've isolated what satisfaction feels like and you don't have any question about it. And that's your guiding feeling. I want to feel satisfaction. And so you reach for it and you find it and you hold yourself steadily there. And then step five is, you're so good at alignment that now you embrace the contrast that puts more in the vortex. You don't feel bad about more contrast because you know it's necessary for the expansion. So you stop second guessing yourself and you move in the direction of what feels good. And you never again try to motivate yourself to do anything. Thank you. May I ask one more question? Did you get that one? Did it make sense to you? Yes. Really? It will. <laughs> when I listen to well, this we don't again. want to put you on the spot. We wanted to settle in with you a little bit because what we just said to you is most people can't hear us until they've really done that. And once you've done that, Esther spent a week or two after we began talking about satisfaction in this way, asking herself, what is that feeling of satisfaction that Abraham's talking about? So she started wanting to be aware of it. And then she'd get into her car, beautiful new Cadillac Escalade. And she'd get out onto the highway and sort of just settle into the road and the ride and just feel excellent. <laughs> she'd just feel like, whew. And she thought, this is what satisfaction is. It's this feeling of adventure and calm and well-being and eagerness. I am so satisfied. 
I'm so satisfied. She got on an airplane one day, and she was in the first-class cabin. So she slipped into her seat, and she thought, satisfied. And then she sort of settled in and buckled up, and now the plane's in the air, and she reclines her seat, and she gets her blanket and her pillow, and she's thinking, oh, I am so satisfied. I'm so satisfied. I'm so comfortable. I'm so satisfied. This is just satisfying. And then a flight attendant came to her just as she was putting her sunglasses on and getting ready to snuggle in for a long winter's nap. And he handed her a bottle of water and he said, I heated this for you in the microwave. I thought it might make you more comfortable. And Esther thought, wow. Well, first she thought, do I look old and feeble? And then she thought, oh, no. This is because I'm so satisfied that the universe is looking for other cooperative components to help me feel even more satisfaction. She'd be in a restaurant, slip into the booth, friends across the table, she'd look at their faces, she'd feel such love for each one of them, and she would think to herself, this is so satisfying. So satisfying. The fragrance is in the air and the leather that I'm sitting on and the friends that I've gathered with and the entire atmosphere of my life. It is so satisfying. And there are plenty of times to do that, but until you start doing it, identifying it, isolating it, milking it, finding the vibrational frequency of it, now you know what you're tuning to. You see what we're getting at? So then... You're satisfied, 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 satisfied. And when something's off, you feel that it's off and you don't let it get off until you establish such a substantial, chronic pattern of connection to source, to the path of least resistance, that then only cooperative components to who you really are and what you really want can come to you. And then other people look at you and they say, it's not fair. Good stuff comes to you and mostly only good stuff comes to you and the rest of us are out here and you know why. It's not some crapshoot. It's not some law of averages. It's not some game of chance or luck. It's not some karmic game where you're being cursed or somebody's doing a voodoo on you. You're in complete control. And what is the control? Right here. Satisfied or not satisfied. Before I push my car down the hill, I come to my senses and I find my alignment. And when that's what you do, oh, next time we see you, you'll say, Hi, Abraham, I don't do anything I don't want to do, but there's so many things I want to do. Having such a good time. All right, now we'll hear you. That was good, by the way. <laughs> I am having such a great time. <laughs> I swear I am. <laughs> I, I want to elaborate on that with you and how that process works when you're co-creating with someone. I'm about to get married to the person that I feel like is the co-creator that I want for the rest of my life. We agree. Thank you. That's what that feeling of love is. That's you and your inner being in complete agreement on the subject at hand. Thank you. Yes, it's a great feeling. This is my third marriage. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Because that contrast built a vortex for you. Yes. And the cooperative components gathered. And you have the understanding of knowing. That's why you were thanking us. Your guidance system is letting you know that what you know is what you know. You got it right this time. You didn't get it wrong the other times, but the other times led to this. <laughs> so don't spend any time dissecting that. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah, I think you just... <laughs> answered everything yeah. you, you know what just happened you can feel that where you were going was not under the influence of this and now that you're under the influence of that all of that is irrelevant exactly thank you so much